Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we'll be covering how RPE can be used to program strength training. First, we need to establish what RPE is. RPE stands for Rate of Perceived Exertion, essentially meaning how hard was this exercise. It uses a number system from 1 to 10 to determine how difficult a given exercise was. This is based purely on subjective feeling, meaning that factors such as mood, pain tolerance, supplements and experience level can all influence how we score our RPE. Therefore, RPE is best used for experienced athletes or trainees who have a good understanding of their own individual level of effort. In the context of strength training, the system works with the athlete scoring a given set a number from 1 to 10 after the set is complete. The RPE given is based on how many more reps they could have performed before complete failure. An RPE of 10 means that no more reps could have been performed in that set. An RPE of 9 means that one more rep could have been performed before failure. An RPE of 8 means that two more reps could have been performed before failure and so on. Another system which classifies reps before failure is the reps in reserve or RIR scale. The RIR scale rates reps before failure opposite to the RPE scale. So an RIR of zero means that no more reps could be performed in that set. An RIR of one means that one more rep could have been performed. An RIR of two means that two more reps could have been performed and so on. Both of these methods work identically well and either can be used by the coach or trainee with no difference between them. RPE may be used as a preferred method of prescribing strength training for its auto-regulation abilities. This means that the athlete can slightly alter the training session based on how they are feeling and adapting to training. So if an athlete doesn't feel as strong on a given day, they will use slightly lighter loads. Or, if they feel stronger than average, they can increase the loads for that day. This can also allow us to see trends over time as to whether the athlete is coping with the demands of the program, or if variables need to be changed. For example, if we can see a plateau or a decline in performance over time, something may need to change. Or loads might be progressing well, and we don't need to change the program at all. Let's now explore how RPE or RIR can be used practically for programming strength training. We'll explore how it can be applied in three different ways for three different training progressions. The first is during an accumulation period. During an accumulation phase, the goal is to increase volume while intensity should be maintained, or maybe slightly progressed. In strength training terms, this means we want to increase the number of reps and or sets we are performing while the weight being used remains the same. An accumulation program using RPE may look something like this. We first need to establish a rough rep range that we are focusing on performing our sets in. So for an accumulation phase, this may be a higher rep range of 8 to 12. We then need to prescribe a set load, which allows us to perform somewhere in this given rep range for multiple sets. Let's say for this athlete, the load is 100 kilos, which will be used for the whole training block. Next, we need to determine how many sets will be performed per week. This could increase over the block or it could remain the same. Let's say for this example to make things simple, we have four sets for each week, except for the deload. So now we have our number of sets and what weight will be used. The last thing to determine is how many reps will be performed. This is where RPE comes in. We can prescribe an increasing RPE each week, which will make each session progressively harder. So we may start with an RPE of six in the first week then an RPE of 7 in the second week, 8 in the third, and 9 in the final week before a deload. So each set will be performed with the RPE prescribed. The athlete will then record how many reps were performed for each set. Naturally, the higher the RPE, the more reps that will be performed, since load remains the same. So over time, the athlete is maintaining their intensity, while volume is increasing via number of reps performed. Sets could also be increased throughout the training block to further progress volume if desired by the athlete or coach. The second method of using RPE in programming for strength training 
is during an intensification phase. During this phase, the goal is to increase load lifted while maintaining a moderate level of volume. This can be programmed using RPE in the following way. The number of sets and reps need to be predetermined, while the load will be the factor which is auto-regulated via RPE. So for example, let's say we want to perform three sets of five each week and increase the load lifted week to week. We can then prescribe increasing RPE each week while the athlete records what loads are used. For example, we may perform three sets of five at an RPE of six in the first week, seven in the second week, eight in the third, and nine in the final week before a deload. Naturally, since the reps and sets remain the same, the athlete should be using heavier loads each week. This allows intensity to increase while volume remains the same. Finally, RPE can also be used during a realization phase. This will be very similar to the previous method of programming, although slightly different. During a realization phase, we want intensity to increase and volume to decrease. So load should increase week to week, while sets and or reps should decrease. RPE may be used to program for this phase in the following way. Again, we start by prescribing sets and reps while the load will be auto-regulated via RPE. The only difference here, compared with the intensification phase, is that the sets and reps decrease through the block rather than remain the same. For example, we may start with four sets of four, then three sets of three, two sets of two, and finally one set of one. From here, we may want to prescribe a higher RPE each week as loads will naturally increase since sets and reps will decrease. For example, we may prescribe an RPE of nine each week because four sets of four at an RPE of nine will use a lighter load than one set of one at an RPE of nine. It should be understood that very high RPEs shouldn't be used for extended periods of time as performance will likely plateau and injury risk will increase. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.